I'm Kim. I'm the Child Development Specialist here at Land Early On, and today we're going to be talking about sleep. So this video is very information heavy, um, so there won't be a lot of children interaction, but we're going to jump right into our sleeping lullabies as well as a book before we get into the information. So these are just some suggestions you can sing to your little one before bed, but if you use other songs, please let me know in the comments on our Facebook page below. All right, let's get our stars up in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. All right, my friends, and now we are going to be teddy bears. <clears throat> teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Teddy bear, teddy bear. Touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, show your shoes. Teddy bear, teddy bear, that will do. Well, teddy bear, teddy bear, go upstairs. And teddy bear, teddy bear, comb your hair. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn off the lights, click. And teddy bears, teddy bears, say good night. Good job. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when the skies are gray. Good job, my friends. And now 
now we're going to be reading a really good bedtime book that I like to read. But let me know what your favorite bedtime book is. How do Dinosaurs Say Goodnight by Jane Yolen and illustrated by Mark Teague. Oh, look at all the different dinosaurs here that are about to go to bed. Which one's your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> What's that? Oh, I heard a T-Rex. I heard a Triceratops. Mine is a Stegosaurus. But let's find out how dinosaurs say goodnight. How does a dinosaur say good night when Papa comes in to turn off the light? Does a dinosaur slam his tail and pout? Does he throw his teddy bear all about? Does a dinosaur stomp his feet on the floor and shout, I want to hear one book more? Oh my, look at, look at Papa. He's like, what should I do to calm him down, huh? Does a dinosaur roar? How does a dinosaur say good night when Mama comes in to turn off the light? Does he swing his neck from side to side? Look, Mama is not impressed, huh? Does he up and demand a piggyback ride? Oh my goodness. What would you do if a dinosaur wanted to piggyback ride you? Oh, I think he'd be really heavy, huh? Does he mope? Does he moan? Does he sulk? Does he sigh? <sighs> Does he fall on the top of his covers and cry? <laughs> no, dinosaurs don't. They don't even try. They give a big kiss. Mwah. They turn out the lights. Click. They tuck in their tails and they whisper good night. They give a big hug, then one kiss more. Mwah. Good night. Good night, little dinosaur. See and so it's time for your little one to fall asleep but they just can't do it. So in this section of the video, we're gonna talk about the importance of routine for your little one, as well as some tips and strategies you can use at home to help your little one fall asleep or ease their sleep anxiety. But before we get to that, we have to look at how many hours your little one actually needs to sleep. So these hours, it does include naps during the day. So if your little one is between four and 12 months, um, they would need around 12 to 16 hours. If they're between one and two, they'll need 11 to 14 hours of sleep in a day, in a 24 hour cycle, I mean. Um, between three and five, they'll need 10 to 13. Six and 12, uh, they'll need nine to 12 hours and 13 to 18 year olds, they'll need between eight and 10 hours of sleep. So the tips and strategies that we will be talking about today really will be more helpful for the older infants, toddlers and preschoolers. They wouldn't really work out for the younger infants just because they do, um, they do wake up all the time um, because they're hungry and they need to be breastfed. But these tips and strategies are good for those that should be sleeping through the night and they just can't. 
So one of the things um, that is important for a sleep routine is a consistent bedtime routine or bedtime schedule. Um, it is very important that they have routine because children love it and they thrive on it. And it does, um, science has been proven that it does work. Routines set expectations and help train behavior. And a night bedtime routine will help your child learn to be sleepy. Um, just like reading in bed may put some of us adults to sleep, structure of bedtime routines also associates bedroom with good feelings and provides a sense of security and control. And for your little one's routine is all about that sense of security and control. So it can really take out the stress of bedtime. It helps make it special and it allows your child to know what to expect. Um, it's also all about consistency and following through, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So some things you can do um, or add into your routine is maybe having a bedtime snack. Sometimes um, if your child is waking up in the middle of the night, it could be because they're hungry. So if you can, giving them a bedtime snack, it could be something as simple as a glass of warm milk plain. Um, if you want to go a little bit extra or more um, to give them more food, uh, plain oatmeal, some apple slices with almond butter or nut-free butter. You can give them some crackers with turkey and cheese, um, some plain yogurt or some toast. Um, if your child is not allergic to nuts, you can give them some nuts as a healthy bedtime snack. Anything that is very low on sugar, and you'll give that to them right before their bedtime um, routine. So like uh, getting dressed, washing up, all that stuff. Helps them keep their tummies full and it make them a little bit sleepier. So to really help them with their bedtime routine, you can also include some quiet activities that they can do before they have to do all of their bedtime stuff. So a good example are puzzles. Puzzles are a really great quiet activity that they can do. Quiet activities really help um, to calm them down and get them settled and not riled up so that they are ready to fall asleep. Another great activity that you can do that is quiet um, is Play-Doh. Um, so Play-Doh is really great because it's a sensory thing. It really relaxes them. Um, if you don't have Play-Doh, art is a really great way. So you can draw, you can paint, all that good stuff. Now, if you have a very active toddler or a toddler, um, toddler preschooler, uh, or older infant, if you have a child who just seems to have a bundle of energy before sleep, what you can do uh, after dinner or maybe two hours or one hour before, they, um, before their bedtime, you can try to get all their energy out of them. So put on some music, dance with them, or you, if the weather permits, you can go out for a walk after dinner, get them nice and tired and, and use up all their energy. You can even do a active Simon Says, and he, these are just some ideas that you can use for active Simon Says. So for example, touch your nose, wiggle your fingers, slither on the ground like a snake, make circles with your arms, do jumping jacks, gallop like a horse. The, the idea of this is to really use up all their energy a couple of hours before bedtime, and then you will go in for with the quiet activities to really help settle them down. You wouldn't want them to be too, too active right before bed, um, just because their, um, uh, their adrenaline and their, their um, their happy hormones are pumping through their body, which will, will make it harder for them to go to sleep. Uh, so you want to do the active activities first, 
and then followed with a quiet calming activity. Another great calming activity you can do after this is our calming yoga. Um, and that you can find in our, um, in our gross motor videos. So this is just examples of the actual bedtime routine. Obviously, you'll have to come up with one that works for your family and your home environment. But these are just some, some uh, good ones. So for your toddlers and your preschoolers, um, when they are getting ready for bed, um, bath and potty and then closing the shades or the curtains in their room and then they get into their pajamas they can have a sip of water read a short bedtime book and then cuddles and kisses right before sleep uh, for the babies um, bath closing the shades and the curtains into their pajamas or sleep sacks uh, reading a short book nursing or bottle feeding them and cuddles and kisses so again, this is just an example. You don't have to follow this, but this is just a good basic one. Something that will help um, your little one to go to sleep is a visual, um, a visual schedule like this. You can print them out in the link on the website that I'll have in the description box. But this is just to show your little one um, what the next steps are. And again, this is all about the consistency all about the routine that they'll need um, and it's just a great visual representation this is a great tool to use for your little ones that might be having bedtime anxiety which is um, perfectly okay a lot of children will have bedtime anxiety um, so this is a great way to um, let them know what they should be expecting so for example, putting on pajamas, using the toilet, you can reverse that order if you want, um, washing your hands, brushing your teeth, drinking water, reading stories. I, I think I know that there are like um, kisses and cuddles visual and then go to bed and sleep. So for some bedtime books, um, you can read any book as long as it lets them fall asleep. But if you're looking for some specific bedtime books. These are just uh, some books. This is a very short list. This is no means exhaustive, but these are books that I like to read. So we had the How Do Dinosaurs Say Goodnight that we were reading earlier. That's a really funny and cute book. Goodnight Moon is a very classic bedtime story. We have A Book of Sleep, which is also a really nice book to read. It's nice and short. It's Time to Sleep, My Love. If Animals Kissed Goodnight. A Bedtime Kiss for Chester Raccoon. If this name is familiar for you, it's because um, if you've ever read The Kissing Hand, this is just an extension of the book. So kissing hand doesn't just mean if your little one is going off to daycare or to kindergarten. The kissing hand can also be used for bedtime as well. Bear snores on. If your little one is into cars and construction, then good night, good night construction site is a really good book. How Will I Ever Sleep in This Bed is great for your little ones um, that have anxiety over transitioning from their crib into a big kid bed. Kiss Goodnight. And the Going to Bed book. So these, again, some really great bedtime books, but by no means an exhaustive list. So if you read other books to your little ones, let us know in the Facebook comments below this video. So some do's and don'ts for when you're putting your little one to sleep. It's mainly just a lot of do's. There's one big don't though. 
So do make sure that your little one's room is dark as well as um, with good room temperature. So you want it dark and quiet um, so that the noise level in the house is low. If your child doesn't like a totally dark room, you can turn on a small night light or leave the hall light on and the door to the bedroom open. Um, again, this is family and child preference. I know for me, when I was little, I liked noise to put me to sleep. So it's really up to you. Um, this is just um, uh, a suggestion. If your little one needs it, you can use a transitional object. Bedtime means separation, and if your little one has separation anxiety, um, this can cause, bedtime can cause anxiousness. Anxiousness. Um, so transitional objects can make it a little bit easier uh, for your little one to go to sleep in their own bed. So things like a blanket or a teddy bear or other comfort items. I know for my nephew, his comfort item was a water bottle. And this kind of object can provide a sense of security and control that comforts and reassures your child. Be consistent. So like I had mentioned before, consistency is everything as well as follow through. So without consistency, you can't expect your child to learn or change behavior. So if you are introducing the visual schedule or a new routine, you have to be consistent with it every night for at least um, three weeks. It takes 30 days to develop a new habit and that is true for your little one. So you will not, if you're doing a new routine or a new strategy, um, you will not see results overnight. You have to be consistent every night for at least three weeks. The one don't that I have is to not use any screens or electronics. And this goes for us as adults as well, but you shouldn't be giving your little one screen time. So TV, iPad, um, phone, computer, anything like that. Um, before bedtime and the reason the reason is that uh, electronics and screens emit blue light and that blue light actually affects melatonin um, and melatonin is the thing that you need to produce in your body to make you go to sleep so um, allowing them to watch TV or something on the tablet or computer or your phone uh, two hours before they go to sleep can actually affect um, their sleep and maybe that's why you'll notice that they won't fall asleep. So it's time for bed, you're tired, and they are not wanting to go to sleep. Or they are trying to climb out of their cribs. So what should you do? Wait, so if you hear your little one crying, and again, these strategies really work for older infants, toddlers, and preschoolers, you would not be wanting to use this for your younger infants, just because your younger infants, when they're crying, it's because they're hungry. Um, you'll want to use this for your older infants that should be sleeping through the night. So if they are supposed to be sleeping through the night and they aren't, they're waking up and they're crying, you need to wait. So put a timer on your phone and wait five minutes. And the reason for this is because you want to see if they can self-soothe themselves. So put a timer for five minutes and wait the whole five minutes before going into their room to comfort them. Usually, um, they, they will settle themselves back to sleep. But again, if this is a new routine, you, you really have to follow through and be consistent with the wait. So after five minutes, if they have not settled themselves down and they're still crying, um, then what you can do is go into their rooms and without talking or interacting with them, 
just pat them to sleep and soothe them to sleep. So the reason that you want to do that, you're patting and soothing them to sleep is so that they know that you are there for them, but you do not want to talk or interact with them because then they think it's time to get up and talk and interact and play with you, which is why you want to go in, soothe them to sleep without talking to them. So usually it's just like um, a a gentle rub on their back or their belly, and then just get them back to sleep. What happens if they come into the room and they want to sleep with you in your bed and you're trying to transition them out of that habit and you want them to sleep in their own bed? So you don't have to go to an extreme like this picture, but you just gently encourage them back into their bed and then you will stay in their room with them until they go to sleep so again consistency every time they do that um, you will have to consistently bring them back to their bed and sleep uh, let them sleep until they pass out and then you can uh, go back into your room so if you're just starting this um, or you're trying to transition them out of your bed and into their own bed um, you can do what you can do for their bedtime routine is actually get them to sleep in their own bed and you can sit or lie on the floor or the carpet next to their bed. And then once they get used to that, then you can sit a little bit further away from the bed once they get comfortable with that. Again, go a little bit further away and a little bit further away until eventually you're kind of just Um, sitting or standing by the door until they fall asleep and then out into the hallway. So hopefully some of these tips and strategies work for you. Again, it is all trial and error. You will have to figure out what is best for your family and your little one. Everyone has different sleeping patterns. Everyone um, is anxious about different things. So let us know what works for you and what doesn't. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know this was a very heavy based video, but hopefully um, you picked up some strategies uh, that can help you with your little one's sleep and bedtime routine. Um, Or if you have any other suggestions, please leave them in the comments on our Facebook page below. Remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of that information is in the description box below. If you do have any questions surrounding sleep or any other developmental uh, topics or areas, please email me personally. My email is also in the description box below. I, I do check my emails, I answer questions. And if need be, I can work more one on one with you as well. Or it could just be a one time email. So, goodbye.